gentlemen, I got a little bit of a mystery here. This is a LOB lock. I believe it's made in Poland. Not sure. But Thomas Telenius, who, sent, who lives in Sweden, sent it to me. Nothing unusual, just normal Euro style. Got to let me let me tie it down. I'll show you why I think it's a little odd, and maybe you guys have some ideas. Let um, me get this. Okay, works perfectly. Notice the actuator turns exactly the way it's supposed to when we use the key. Nothing unusual about the key. It is a five pinner. I mean, it's got some good bidding, but that's really all this lock has going for it. All right, let me pick it real quick, and then I'll show you. I'll show you what I think the mystery is. I have picked it before. Nothing in here. It's got a couple of spools, but nothing too crazy. If I can get it with the camera going. Okay, we got a good fault set going. Let's find one of those spools. There it is, number three. And there we go. Alright, so we got it picked. Now, notice when it's picked, when I turn it, the actuator, let me just stick this pick in there. Notice the actuator does in fact work. So we could pick this lock open. Alright? Alright, let's swap it around. Let's go to the other side. Now on the side that we just picked, notice that the tail goes off to the right side. So that would be typical of what we find in the United States. When we flip it to the other side, notice the tail goes off to the left. Let me clamp this thing down. Now obviously with the key, uh, with the tail going that way, the original key here will not, will not fit in there, just won't go. So let's pick this thing, and I'm going to show you something odd about this. Try to pick this thing. If I can get my pick in, there we go. This side's a little harder. A little more sensitive, but still nothing special. Should be the last one. No, nope. one more. Not quite. There's our spool. Come on, baby. Well, I said that was the last one. Uh, number four fell back down. Okay, we got this side picked. Now here's the odd thing. Let me get that out of there. Notice that when we turn this key after picking it, the actuator does not turn. We can turn this thing all the way around, and that actuator just doesn't do anything. Now, even if we turn it upside down and stick something in there to try to engage the actuator, as I'll do here, when I turn it, it won't turn that actuator. It just completely seizes up. Nothing happens to the actuator. And that's because, in order to get this lock open from this side, you need this key. Is that awesome or what? Ten pinner, at least. Try to imagine walking around with that in your pocket. And this key goes all the way through the lock and unlocks both sides of this uh, uh, lock, and then it turns the actuator. So this actuator is actually seized up to that side of the lock. It's not seized up to this side, so even if we pick this side of the lock, it's not going to do us a bit of good. The only way to open it is to have this long key or pick both sides of this lock, which no pick is going to be long enough to reach both sides. So why would you need a lock like this? It couldn't be for a Master King situation or a hotel room or something like that. The, it just doesn't logic out. I don't understand why someone would design a lock like this. If anybody's got an idea, man, I sure would appreciate it. Anyway, fellas, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Thomas, thank you for this weird lock. Appreciate it.